Welcome back to TV5 News at 9. We are back with another edition of Ask Sheriff Swanson. And the man himself is joining us now this morning. Chris, good to see you. How are you? I'm doing well, Blake. Welcome, everybody, for another Friday edition. Oh, yeah. Happy Friday. So uh, we are going to cover a few important programs in our area. And uh, one of them is the Narcan Leave Behind program. What can you tell us about Narcan, what it is, and why it's so important, and what you guys are doing? So first, uh, let me explain Narcan real quickly. Uh, it is to antagonize the receptors that are being overwhelmed with the opiate poison. And that could be from a pill or actually the heroin itself, fentanyl, those things that are opiate based. So Narcan blocks those receptors and actually brings them back to life. That's how important Narcan is. And I don't think anybody watching or listening can deny that we have an opiate crisis and this is something that is key to bring people back. We have seen uh, a small uptick uh, this year and certainly last year of overdose and deaths. So this is key and it's called the Narcan Leave Behind program sponsored by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. So July 1st, we were able to, when I say we, public servants, police, fire, EMS, mm -hmm. to give boxes of Narcan out to the community just if you see somebody. Maybe you know a family member that is uh, is uh, struggling with addiction or, or you're walking down the street, an officer, a firefighter, somebody in mask can say, hey, we're gonna give you this Narcan, this is how you use it. And I do wanna explain real quick, it's so simple. It's a nasal administration. So let's just say you have one of these boxes that has two vials. You see somebody that you suspect is overdosed. They look lethargic, they're, they don't look like they're breathing. They're turning blue. Uh, they are laying down, passed out, it doesn't matter. You simply grab your box, rip open the top, and you'll see that inside is one of these containers. You peel this back, and it's again, it's nasal administration. So you just simply take this. This is a live one, ready? This goes up the nose, and watch this. That's it. Okay. Once you put it up the nose and you give the administration, it's one and done and it can reverse the effects of opiates and bring them back to life. That's why it's so important to get Narcan out to everybody we could possibly give it to so we don't have opiate deaths. Absolutely, it seems like life or death kind of tool, Sheriff, and uh, yes. I, I know it does a lot, so uh, that's good. And it, it seems easy to use, so anyone can uh, use it. And would you suggest, even, like you said, even if you don't really know anybody who you know might be involved, yes. it's still good to have one? Yeah, just have it in your car. You can literally throw uh, a, a package in your purse or you can throw in your backpack. You know, and you can't. Let's just say somebody uh, is administered Narcan and they don't need it. You're not going to kill them. Yeah. Like, there's, there's no downside. It can only help. And if you suspect somebody that's overdosed and they are lethargic, they look cyanotic or blue, they're not breathing, that could bring them back to life, even if you just decide to go to the store that night. And so we're able to really open the doors thanks to that cooperation. And it's open to everybody who's watching that has an organization. Just contact the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Maybe your local agencies already do that. Mm -hmm. But July 1st, we were able to open the doors and give Narcan to the street like never before. That's great, and I'm sure it will save a lot of lives out there as well. Also, saving lives, Sheriff, we want to talk about your IGNITE program, which stands for Inmate Growth Naturally and Intentionally Through Education. So, Chris, we hear the program has crossed state lines. So tell us about the expansion. Well, that's a great segue because a lot of our population that come to jail uh, are addicted or co-addicted. In fact, 9 out of 10 inmates across the country that come to jails uh, whether it's Saginaw Bay, Midland, Genesee, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. They're addicted or co-addicted to drugs or alcohol. Wow. Nine out of ten. And then half of them come with the, uh, the, uh, the baggage that they cannot read and they can't succeed. They have a fifth grade math level, a sixth grade reading level. And, and on top of that, they're struggling with mental health issues. So you have a population like that that's already incarcerated. Like, how do you give them a chance? Well, there's a lot of things that we've done, but the education piece is critical. So Genesee County, September 8, 2020, we did our grand opening, Channel 5 was there, yeah. and we launched a culture change. And so now we go to school two hours a day, five days a week. We have virtual reality. We have trade schools. We have hundreds of courses. We have diplomas. And, and of course, GEDs people can get. We have food service training. Well, that whole thing has changed the entire movement of Genesee County. And it's been recognized by other counties in the state and now nationally. So when I was down at the National Sheriff Association, 
I was able to give a, a, a talk on race relations to over 300 people. And when I concluded, one sheriff came to me in a beeline and said, Sheriff, my name is Sheriff Hutchinson from Hennepin County, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and we need Ignite. Do you know where Hennepin County is, Blake? I have no clue. <laughs> Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. Derek Chauvin was in his jail. The court proceeding that he was convicted and sentenced was in Hennepin County Courthouse. This is what they've been living since May of last year. Yeah. It's a 1.5 million people community county. Uh, their jail itself is almost 900. We're about 600. They are about four times the size of Genesee County. And, and Sheriff Hutchinson wants to bring Ignite in there because he sees the value. He's been watching what Michigan is doing. He's yeah. been watching what this office is doing. He saw my talk and he, he's like, we want it. So we were able to, to agree. And we have uh, been fully committed to work with Hennepin County virtually. And then I personally will be going down there for their grand opening in September to open up Ignite in Hennepin County, Minnesota. Like you talk about full circle, that's why people here need to celebrate that what we're doing, it's working. The data shows that people's hope is restored, second chances are given, and it's because we're educating people that have been not given the chance or chose not to do it. We're taking those excuses away. We're changing culture. Absolutely, Chris. I'm sure that makes you feel good, too, as sheriff yourself. Well, you know, I, I, I have always been a people servant. That's what sheriffs do. We, we take care of the people. But when you're actually able to see a, a historic change, just like we saw last year, you know, and in, in, in the things that we were able to do when it comes to protest and, and uniting people, but education in the incarceration model, uh, to the way we're doing it, has not been done. And, and also, think about it. Everybody who goes to prison comes through the jail, but not everybody from jail goes to prison. Mm -hmm. So 90% of the people that come to jail go right back out of the street. So how are you making them better while they're there so when they go in the street, they never come back? Right. They, 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 we're not interested in making better inmates. We want to make better people. So they're not going back to the addictions. They're not going back to the B&Es, the spousal abuses, the drinking. The, and those things are, are replaced with some value. And we're seeing that. We just graduated last month 11 people with diplomas and GEDs up on the third floor, caps and gowns over their overalls that they wear in jail. And so when they make different decisions because they have a different tool belt to use, it changes their own tree too. That's amazing. And was that your largest class, graduating class? It was. We graduated just the month, since we started 16 people just with diplomas and GEDs. But we've done over 50,000 contact hours. We have logged tens of thousands of hours on our Chromebooks. We have obviously graduated people from our Into Work program. And right now, Channel 5 will be invited. We are going to graduate. Uh, as of right now, there's eight female inmates into our food service program, which is about a 230-hour program. There's eight female inmates that are getting their certification to go to any kitchen in the country because it's a federally certified program. And you're going to be there for that graduation. So it's not just GEDs and diplomas. It's people that are getting different certifications, you know. And, yeah. and that's how you change. Not everybody's built for college. But maybe you're built to cut hair or go work at a slot or, or, or go into one of the trades and start as an apprentice and get into a, you know, a, a, a journey uh, that's kind of a, a level of training. And now you're out there working for one of the unions, you know, the bricklayers, the pipe fitters. You know, and, and that started here because we're giving them the ability to to see there's other options than, than committing crimes and falling into your addictions. Absolutely. Sheriff, saving lives, changing lives. Is there anything else that you want to add before we go? You know, I would just say, because I don't know if there's people watching that are struggling with addictions. We started this in the top of this show. Uh, or maybe somebody that knows somebody that's struggling and you feel like your situation is hopeless. I can tell you, I will, walk, I will march people up on here one after another that others gave up on but they have been able to stay clean. So I know it's dealing, uh, it, it's tough dealing with addicts, but just stay hopeful. If you're struggling with it, get the help you need before you die or get locked up. If you're a family member, you gotta give them hope with boundaries. But I'm telling you, I've seen that there are changes that can be made and, and as a culture and as a community, but we can do it. So just stay hopeful. Absolutely. Sheriff, thank you so much. There's always a better tomorrow. And uh, thank you yeah. for being honest with us as always.
And for those of you at Thank home. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Blake. Yes. Thank you, Mid Michigan. Thank you, Channel 5. You are absolutely welcome, and welcome back anytime. Also, it's your turn at home. If you have a burning question for the sheriff, just send it to us at WNEM at WNEM.com or send it to our social media.